Hey, I'm James Hodges. I'm the event director for Etel Europe. I'm here with Darren Johnson, who's with Field Operations for Bloomreach. Yep. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the key themes that we've been going over at Etel Europe uh, in the last three days. It's been a very exciting few days. Uh, so first of all, Darren, just want to start off, hear your thoughts on kind of key challenges that you're seeing in the industry from, from retailers. What are the challenges and what are they doing to try and solve those challenges? Yeah, cool. Thanks, James. The, um, I mean, the key challenge is just it's getting more difficult to compete, right? There's more people entering the space. There's a finite number of channels to accomplish the key goals for retailers, acquiring new customers, doing it more efficiently. Retailers are, are getting squeezed continuously on each one of these challenges. And they need to do it more efficiently with, in a more data-driven fashion uh, to compete more effectively as it continues to mature and the digital business becomes a bigger part of their overall revenue stream. Sure. So we'll talk a little bit about big data um, shortly, but mobile is obviously something that's taken off a lot. Yeah. Uh, we've talked a lot about mobile the last three days. We're seeing some retailers getting 50% web traffic. Yep. Some of their sales are over 10% from yep. mobile alone. Then you've got tablet, you've got all these areas. So yep. what are you guys seeing from mobile and, and how are you helping retailers with the mobile channel? It, it is a massive opportunity uh, and a challenge because at the same time that the, the percentage of traffic is coming through mobile and tablet, um, the conversion rates and the revenue per visit metrics of that traffic are significantly below what it is on the desktop. And I think really what it is is a shift. You know, a lot of these digital businesses were built with the, uh, the desktop in mind and it is just not performing the way it needs to perform through these, these mobile and, and tablet channels. Um, uh, we're making a concerted effort to build products that can help attack that opportunity and that challenge. As an example, uh, search, right, is a, is a massively important component to an online retailer's business. Uh, a big component of search is, is faceted navigation, right? That does not work on a mobile interface, sure. right? And we need to approach it differently uh, as an industry. We need to, to, to do things more intuitively uh, as it relates to different, you know, uh, uh, screen types and device settings. Uh, search, product recommendations, um, you know, omni-channel, right? The ability to understand, you know, I, I've talked to a number of retailers that, it was interesting, they said, I don't care about conversion on smartphones. Sure. Interesting, you know, yeah. uh, uh, topic. But really they're like, people are making decisions on smartphones and purchasing either on the website or in the store. So I need to be able to invest in these new channels and be able to measure the impact in others. Absolutely. And so, you know, we can no longer talk about omnichannel. We actually have to deliver on it now, and we're being forced by the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really interesting when you look at uh, mobile and what you said there about conversion. People aren't as interested about conversion on mobile, but how do you try and track and measure that across channels? What about things like attribution? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, ab ab absolutely. I mean, attribution is, is a persistent topic. It kind of goes back to the theme is that we, we have to get more efficient, right? And, 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 and better with, with how we're spending our advertising dollars. And so attribution becomes a big topic. Um, I, had a, I had a customer tell me a couple weeks ago that if they took the, uh, the incrementality that they heard from all of their vendors, their business would be up 300%. Uh, not the case. So attribution is, is, a, is a big topic, um, but it also can be uh, paralyzing, right? If you, you get that, getting down to this, holy grail of specific attribution yep. um, and there's so many different ways to approach it you know any click and last click and first Absolutely. click and um, it, it's tough I think making the effort to get a better understanding without getting down to a very specific level sure. is, is a win for most people uh, tackling that challenge yeah so we've had a look at some sort of very simple models like first click last click mm -hmm. what do you guys kind of see as the preferred model for someone who's starting out and then for someone who's more advanced <laughs> It, it, it really differs. It differs per channel. It differs, you know, uh, um, for different folks. I would say, you know, the standard seems to be a lot of last click, yeah. right? And then it's the, the question on the time horizon, sure. right? That you're looking at these touch points and attributions. Yeah. Um, you know, any click is, is applicable in, in different facets. At yeah. the end of the day, it's all any click. Yeah. Right, it is someone is going to be touched in multiple attributes. I think yeah. you know affiliates are really good at, at last click. Right, it makes sense. It's the last touch. It's a it's a uh, it's an incentive to press forward. Sure, I, I really believe it's different for different channels. Okay, yeah. so that's something to speak to you a little bit more. In depth I, about. I I think it's something that if you're gonna again compete more effectively, yeah. you're gonna push to measure attribution. But if you are frozen and you're not gonna act because you don't have a very clean view of attribution, yeah. then you're gonna be passed by. Yeah. So, uh, so data is really coming into this. We've heard so much about big data. Everyone's still kind of confused by it. What does it, what does it mean to you and, right. and how you guys try to help people demyth big, right. big data? Um, 
B big data is is kind of a double-edged sword, right? It feels so overhyped and it's almost overused. Um, I came to Bloomreach from Omniture, right, okay. and, and Adobe, and I've been in the measurement space for a long time. And what big data really means to me is we finally only recently gotten good at leveraging web data, yeah. right, from this web channel. And big data is just getting more data to be smarter Definitely. and faster and, and more competitive. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of big data that's about tools to, to manage a company's big data. Um, I think, you know, Bloomreach, we take a different approach to it. We focus on this concept of big data applications. Okay. So we use big data. We run massive amounts of data. We understand what the demand is out on the greater internet and what's happening. Yeah. So our customers can be more relevant, right, to supply that demand. Yeah. Um, so we use big data, but it's, it's kind of invisible to our customers, sure. right? I mean, we, we sell, you know, traffic and revenue, sure. um, uh, using, but we use big data to compete effectively and help our customers be at a, give a competitive advantage. Absolutely. So there's the use of big data and the promise is real. I think the industry will get better at, at, at harnessing and managing their big data. Yeah. Um, in the interim, I would encourage retailers to leverage big data through technology companies like Bloomreach. Sure. Um, Again, to get a competitive advantage, they can, you know, I've seen three-year strategies of of how we're going to bring all this big data into a warehouse and all of that. Well, that's that's three years of competitive advantage lost. So different ways to slice it. It's real. It's not going anywhere. It's going to continue to define itself. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're using data to compete more effectively and drive your top KPIs, um, you're in the big data game. Yeah. Well, a few interesting things. So data-driven marketing, obviously, in terms of e-commerce, it's been around for a while. Big data's changing the game. So first of all, I want to ask you how, how to go, kind of go about doing that. Um, but just a point you touched upon there in terms of data and if you're trying to build a data warehouse and looking three years down, down the track, by the time you've built it, it's obsolete, right? Yeah. So how do you kind of chunk it into smaller areas and then how do you use big data to enable data-driven marketing? Right. Um, Big broad question. You know, I, I personally believe you've got to attack it from all fronts, right? You need a long-term strategy to understand how you're going to get a, a, a pure view of your customers and your prospects, yeah. you know, as a retailer uh, from all the different data sources that are out there. Yeah. And you're going to have to, you know, build that into a competitive advantage over time. Sure. Uh, in the interim, you know, you can be leveraging, you know, partners like Bloomreach or others uh, to, to leverage big data. But if you're, you have to make a connection between your business goals you know, and yeah. the the buzzword of, of big data, yeah. right? Managing for data sake uh, could be a fatal mistake for a lot of people. If you're not keeping your eye on the business goals that it could yield and when it will yield. Sure. Um, now, just delving a little bit into something specific you mentioned before about SEO. Mm -hmm. doesn't seem like there's a lot of people actually really helping businesses with SEO. So yep. um, why is that and, and how are you guys trying to kind of combine that with all these other big data pieces? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. If you look at all the... Um, all the channels that, that retailers use to drive traffic, acquire customers, you know, paid search and affiliates and email and the like. Uh, SEO is, is one that hasn't had a lot of, of technology support behind it. Um, and a lot of that's because, you know, it's a, it's a unique sector, yeah. right? It is, is owned by one big vendor, right? And they make the rules. Um, uh, from Bloomreach's perspective, we, we are able to execute in SEO because, you know, 70% of search traffic is coming from this concept of the long tail. Right? Yeah. Long tail means you have you need a lot of data, right? Yeah. And you need a, to be able to work efficiently with computers, sure. right? A human cannot optimize for long tail queries. So that is the concept of Bloomreach. That is where we got our start. Using this concept of big data, truly understanding what people are looking for from a long tail perspective, uh, and being able to match that with the customers we work with, right? Yeah. What content they have to supply that demand. Yeah. Um, so. We big data to help our customers execute on SEO. Yeah. So that's my answer would be that the, the evolution of big data has enabled us to finally execute on this channel of SEO, Fantastic. right? And to do it in a way that's high quality, right? And, and adheres to, to the rules and better experiences for customers, better results for search engines. Yeah. And at the end of the day, for our customers, more revenue and more traffic. Fantastic. And, yeah. and uh, kind of final question in the area is landing page optimization. Yep. Been around forever. People have talked about it. Still not that many real great solutions out there. So how are you guys seeing this transforming with big data and how are you guys really trying to help improve this for retailers? Yeah, it's funny. I've been real passionate about this topic for a long time. I, I was early at a company called Offermatica uh, back in the kind of testing and, and, and targeting world. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that is now test and target at Adobe. And landing page optimization was something we never delivered on. 
was because it's just too manual in its nature, yeah. right? To be able to, to, to build different experiences and the different creative assets yeah. to deliver the right land experience. Sure. I mean, you're paying that much to get that traffic. You cannot have a 98% bounce rate and be effective. Um, but we, as an industry, haven't been able to deliver on that promise because it's been too manual. It's too labor intensive. Sure. Um, back to big data and back to what Bloomreach is doing, right? The machines have to kind of drive it at that scale. Yeah. And so under, if you have a deep, true understanding of the content that you have to supply to the traffic that's coming in, yeah. and you've got a lot more understanding of what that traffic is looking for and what a relevant experience for them is, yeah. you can either A, dynamically build that right experience, or better yet, that right land experience probably already lives in the millions and millions of pages of content. Sure. They are probably being underutilized, yeah. right, in your website. And so having machine learning and big data be able to surface the right experience, measure the impact to reduce that bounce rate, um, we're finally in a position technologically to deliver on that promise. Uh, I think there's advances that have brought us to a point where we can do it more efficiently. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's a little bit about Big Day, a little bit about Bloomreach, a little bit about Etel Europe. I um, hope you guys found this useful. Um, Darren, how can they contact you if they've got any more questions? Absolutely. Uh, Bloomreach.com. Yep. Um, we're one of the fastest growing companies in the valley. And I personally believe it's because we're helping our customers make money, not just giving them technology. That's fantastic. And what's your email address if anyone has a query? Yeah, my email address is just dj at Bloomreach.com. Okay. Thanks very much. Hey, Pre thanks, appreciate Jeff. it. All right, man. Enjoy. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.